For as long as humanity has existed, the moon has been our silent companion, a cold, distant watcher, suspended above us, steady and unchanging, while civilizations rose and fell beneath its pale light. We looked up at it through firelight, through glass, through telescopes, and always felt the same quiet assurance. It was there, eternal, mute, and safe. But what if that silence was never real? What if the moon was never mute at all, but only waiting patient, dormant, until the right voice called to it from the dark? If you're here now listening to this, make sure you subscribe because what you're about to hear isn't just a story. It's a warning, and once you know, you can't unknow it. In the past year, a new visitor appeared in the night sky, an interstellar object named Three-Eye Atlas. It glowed with an impossible emerald hue, shifting its course as though something unseen was steering it. Scientists around the world were mesmerized. Theories bloomed, data poured in, but nothing explained what they were seeing. Then one night, Atlas pulsed a single perfect burst of energy directed not at Earth, but at the moon. And within minutes, the moon answered. At first, no one believed it. Signals poured into observatories in Spain, in Australia, in every listening post tuned to the heavens. Sharp, laser-like bursts of energy arrived from the lunar surface. Not static, not random noise, but precision. The kind of precision that made seasoned scientists go pale. When they traced the source, the answer froze them where they stood. The moon had responded directly to Three-Eye Atlas. In that moment, the comforting illusion of the silent moon shattered. Satellites orbiting our nearest neighbor began detecting patterns never before recorded strange rhythmic emissions from the dark side, a place untouched by human hands. It wasn't an echo. It wasn't a reflection. It was something else entirely. Something alive in the data, as if the moon itself had awakened. Researchers described a feeling like the air leaving the room, like the universe had leaned in and whispered back. When they examined the signal more deeply, the terror only grew. The returning pulse from the moon wasn't a simple mirror of Atlas's energy. It carried new data layers upon layers of harmonics, containing prime numbers, spirals, and golden ratios identical to those seen in the green glow of Atlas. Yet mixed within were distortions, delays, as if the signal had traveled through dense material before surfacing. Lunar seismographs still buried in the dust since the Apollo era began to shake faint tremors, echoing the exact rhythm of the signal. Something beneath the crust had stirred. Some called it resonance. Others said it was impossible. But one quiet voice among the researchers said what everyone feared to admit. The moon wasn't just reacting. It was answering. Something hidden beneath its surface had woken, and it was transmitting. That night, the world changed forever. Whispers began to spread through the scientific community the return of an old forbidden idea. The hollow moon theory, once laughed out of every university, resurfaced with a vengeance. They remembered the Apollo impact tests, when modules crashed onto the lunar surface and the moon rang like a bell for hours. Back then, it was dismissed as geological quirk, but now in the shadow of Atlas, that sound felt less like resonance and more like memory. What if the moon was never entirely natural? What if it had always been a construct hollow chambers, sleeping beneath layers of dust, waiting for a signal like this one to wake them? Across the world, ancient myths took on new weight. Old Sumerian texts that spoke of the moon being placed in the sky. African legends that told of a time before it existed at all. Suddenly, these weren't dismissed as stories. They were records whispers of something humanity had lived through before and forgotten. The moon's voice wasn't new. It was ancient. Then came the conversation. Atlas pulsed again and the moon replied, back and forth, light for light, sound for sound an invisible dialogue across space. And then the worst realization of all some of those patterns pointed toward Earth. Analysts began tracing geometric alignments in the harmonics, discovering that the signals weren't random. They formed coordinates, shapes, maps. It was as if the Moon and Atlas were drawing something together, something that included us. Soon it wasn't just the skies that felt the touch of Atlas. On Earth, instruments began to act strangely, Old satellites that had been dead for years flickered to life, broadcasting strings of binary noise that matched the patterns found in the lunar response. Even radio telescopes detected phantom frequencies no one had tuned, as though every piece of human technology that had ever listened to space had suddenly become part of the conversation. And then Earth began to move, 
not visibly but subtly tremors beneath the ground that didn't match tectonic maps. Compasses twisted, auroras appeared far from the poles, glowing with that same sickly emerald hue. Animals behaved erratically, flocks forming perfect spirals, whales beaching in coordinated patterns along coasts. It was as if the entire planet had begun to hum along with the frequency of the moon. Earth was no longer a bystander. It was being drafted into the signal. Then suddenly everything went quiet. The pulses stopped. The sky was still. For six hours, no sound, no light, no energy wave from Atlas or the moon. Relief washed over the scientific community, but it didn't last. When the data was replayed through low-frequency filters, the truth emerged. The silence wasn't silence at all. Beneath the static was a steady hum, soft, rhythmic, deliberate shared between Atlas, the moon, and Earth itself. They hadn't stopped talking. They had only changed their tone, lowering it beneath the threshold of human hearing. They were hiding their words. Not from each other, from us. Telescopes soon revealed another horror. During Atlas's pulses, its emerald light fractured into beams thin, surgical rays that reached beyond physical possibility, each one aligning perfectly with the frequencies of the lunar echoes. The moon responded by scattering faint green arcs, visible even to the naked eye. For a brief, impossible moment, Earth and its moon became one massive transmitter, glowing across the void. Humanity wasn't just observing anymore. It was shining with them. Old archives began to resurface, hidden within Cold War data, and forgotten Apollo transmissions were strange readings. Bursts from the moon, ignored for decades. Tremors without cause, vibrations during eclipses. Ancient Chinese astronomers once wrote that the moon rang like a drum. Now all of it made sense. This had happened before. Atlas had been here before. Every time it returned, it spoke to the moon first. And every time humanity forgot. Then one night the entire world saw it. The moon began to glow not with reflected sunlight, but with its own light. A cold green luminescence that pulsed like a heartbeat. Cameras across the world captured it. Every phase in sync with Atlas's rhythm. Governments called it atmospheric illusion, but no one believed them. The moon had come alive. After that, nothing was the same. Instruments failed. Atomic clocks lost seconds, then gained them back. Spectrographs recalibrated themselves toward the green spectrum. Even unplugged devices flickered in sync with Atlas's pulse. And then people began to feel it a vibration in their bones. A hum in their ears that came every few minutes like a breath drawn by the planet itself. Those who heard it described visions, spirals, symbols and blinding light behind their eyelids. Children drew patterns in sand identical to those encoded in the lunar signal. Hospitals reported patients whispering in their sleep in unrecognizable cadences, their EEG readings matching Atlas's rhythm. It wasn't just the moon that was awake now. Humanity was part of the message. And then came the discovery that changed everything. Observatories detected a fraction of the moon's outgoing signal, diverting into deep space not toward Earth, but toward the Pleiades. The realization hit like ice. The moon wasn't speaking to us. It was relaying. We were never the audience. We were the interference.